Thank you and good afternoon. And I'm so glad to be back with you all again today. Let's begin with an overview of the data. Yesterday, CDC reported over 34,600 cases of COVID-19. Our seven day average is just over 54,400 cases per day. And this represents a really hopeful decline of about 21% from our prior seven day average. The seven day average of hospital admissions is just over 5,100. Again, a positive sign with a decrease of about 9% from the previous seven day period. And the seven day average of daily deaths also declined about, to about 660 per day, a decrease of about 6%. Each day, more and more Americans are rolling up their sleeves and getting vaccinated and likely contributing to these very positive trends. We regularly share with you the benefits of vaccination, the efficacy in preventing infection and the decreases we see in hospitalizations and deaths. These are incredibly important benefits of vaccination and there are so many more. I know that the quarantine and shutdowns throughout the pandemic have been exhausting. I know that we all miss the things that we used to do before the pandemic, and I know that we all want to get back to doing those things that we love and soon. Today is another day we can take a step back to the normalcy of before. Over the past year, we have spent a lot of time telling Americans what they cannot do, what they should not do. Today, I'm going to tell you some of the things you can do if you are fully vaccinated. Again, as a reminder, the CDC defines fully vaccinated as 14 days after your second dose of a Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, or 14 days after your single dose of a J&J &J vaccine. Today, CDC is updating our recommendations for fully vaccinated people and providing guiding principles and sample activities to give people who are fully vaccinated a way to assess their own risk for COVID-19 and determine what situations are safe. If you are fully vaccinated, things are much safer for you than those who are not yet fully vaccinated. This guidance will help you, your family, and your neighbors make decisions based on the latest science and allow you to safely get back to things you love to do. I am optimistic that people will use this information to take personal responsibility to protect themselves and to protect others, and I hope will encourage people to get fully vaccinated. There are many situations where fully vaccinated people do not need to wear a mask particularly if they are outdoors, as shown by the graphic on the right. If you are fully vaccinated and want to attend a small outdoor gathering with people who are vaccinated and unvaccinated, or dine at an outdoor restaurant with friends from multiple households, the science shows if you are vaccinated, you can do so safely unmasked. On the CDC website, we have posted examples of numerous outdoor activities that are safe to do without a mask if you are fully vaccinated. Generally, for vaccinated people, outdoor activities without a mask are safe. However, we continue to recommend masking in crowded outdoor settings and venues, such as packed stadiums and concerts, where there is decreased ability to maintain physical distance and where many unvaccinated people may also be present. We will continue to recommend this until widespread vaccination is achieved. Now let's talk about what you can do indoors. Here again, we have unvaccinated people and their risk on the left where nothing has changed. Risk is indicated and masking is required. We then show the markedly decreased risk for vaccinated people on the right. Given what we know about COVID-19 vaccines and their efficacy, it is also safe for those who are fully vaccinated to return to the activities they love doing inside while wearing a mask. The guiding principles we released today and the illustrative examples compare the safety of several activities if you are vaccinated or not. And the difference is clear. As we gather more and more data on the real world efficacy of vaccines, we know that masked, fully vaccinated people can safely attend worship services inside, go to an indoor restaurant or bar, 
and even participate in an indoor exercise class. Although these vaccines are extremely effective, we know that the virus spreads very well indoors. Until more people are vaccinated, and while we still have more than 50,000 cases a day, mask use indoors will provide extra protection. The examples today show that when you are fully vaccinated, you can return to many activities safely, and most of them outdoors and unmasked, and begin to get back to normal. And the more people who are vaccinated, the more steps we can take towards spending time with people we love doing the things we love to enjoy. I hope this message is encouraging for you. It shows just how powerful these vaccines are in our efforts to end this pandemic and why we are asking everyone to roll up their sleeves and get vaccinated. The science is clear. The COVID-19 vaccines have been through many transparent, rigorous processes that continue to prove they are safe and effective. If you haven't already, please get vaccinated. In some communities, you can find walk-up venues who have advanced appointments or where appointments aren't even necessary. To see more details about what we released today, including the evidence and science behind these recommendations, and to learn more about the activities you can safely do when you are fully vaccinated, please go to cdc.gov. Thank you, and I'll now turn things over to Dr. Fauci.